Okay, it's official now. The Baltimore Ravens will be taking on the Houston Texans this Saturday at M&T Bank Stadium at 4.30 p.m. So this should be, it's going to be a tough one, man. It's going to be a tough one. Ravens obviously took care of business last time. It was at the crib last time, too. So, hey, just have a repeat performance like that. You know what? You can have an even better performance than you had week one of this year because you weren't clicking on all cylinders on offense, not even on defense either. But go out there. Do your thing, just like you did earlier this year, and we'll be good to go. I mean, now this, this should be a um, really, really good game. Uh, it should be really fun. I'm sure it's going to have its moments of stress, but, again, I am confident that the Ravens, whether it was going to be against the Steelers or whether it was going to be against the Texans or even Browns or Dolphins, uh, I was confident that Ravens, that they will take care of business. Uh, Houston Texans, they're going to be coming in, in the M&T Bank. Like, it ain't, it ain't hit me yet. The game, the game ain't hit me yet. I guess because it's just been so long since like the real Ravens were on the schedule. Ever since that Dolphins game, and that Dolphins game was on uh, December thirty first. Uh, today, today's the fifteenth, so it was two weeks ago. But it just it feels like longer. It feels like longer. Um, and but we'll finally see these Baltimore Ravens, man. The real Baltimore Ravens. We'll get to see them uh, on Saturday. So in just what five days, right? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. So in, in five days, we're going to get to see our boys back. All right, and this is, this is real, man. This is real because it's playoff time. No more games. No more. You already know, man. We didn't already said the same stuff. You already heard the same stuff over and over. It ain't nothing left to be said. Like, we know who these Houston Texans are. We know what they're capable of. But we know who these Baltimore Ravens are. And we know what they're capable of. Um, the Baltimore Ravens under John Harbaugh, they really do a good job normally uh, against rookie quarterbacks. Now, while C.J. Stroud, he ain't just your average rookie quarterback. He ain't your average rookie quarterback. D'Amico Ryans is not your average rookie coach. Um, but I think the Baltimore Ravens and the experience that they have, it, it'll bowl well for them uh, in this matchup. But we'll talk about that more throughout the week. Now, um, the Baltimore Ravens did make a couple of roster moves leading up to to this game this week and whatnot because they released Laquan Treadwell from the active roster. So he gets to go to waivers, um, but he, yeah, he'll be a free agent like by tomorrow uh, once he clears waivers at 4 p.m. Um, and they also put Pepe Williams on injury reserve. Uh, so his season is over. Um, I guess the Ravens just felt like, because they brought him back. They brought him back, but he ain't really played, if at all. I don't remember him playing at all. But anyway, his season is done. And Laquan Treadwell, I mean, you figure that his season will be done with the unless they sign him back to the practice squad. But in order for them to sign him back to the practice squad, they had to call somebody else from the practice squad to take his spot. So we'll see what happens with that. But bottom line, the Baltimore Ravens opened up two roster spots. Who will those two roster spots go to? Initially, when the news first came out that they dropped Laquan Treadwell and they put Pepe Williams on injured reserve, I was thinking, oh, Mark Andrews and Dalvin Cook. Uh, but then I was like, hold up. But Dalvin Cook is not a necessity that you put him on the active roster. Reason being, he's on the practice squad. You got you, you can do three call-ups for a divisional AFC Championship and Super Bowl. You, so you, you ain't got to worry about that. You, you're straight as far as call-ups. You're good. And if you want to, you can protect them on the practice squad. I'm not sure how the practice squad rules work now that you're in the playoffs. If another team could sign him off your practice, but Dalvin Cook is good where he at. He, he can stay on a practice squad. You can just call him up for the game, and you'll be straight. Um, so Dalvin Cook, I don't think they're going to put him on the active roster. But there is our Darius Washington, as somebody reminded me of. I said, oh, yeah, our Darius Washington. He did get designated back to return. Um, but the second step is actually putting him on the active roster. So that could be a move, especially with them releasing Pepe Williams. Uh, you don't want to make a secondary weaker. You don't want to have less depth. Uh, so it, it would be would make sense if it was a corresponding move if they just switched out Pepe Williams uh, for Darius Washington. Now, uh, with Laquan Treadwell, with him being a wide receiver, again, initially I thought Mark Andrews, but then with him being a wide receiver, it's like, oh, okay, well, there you go. Uh, Duv Devin Duvernay. Devin Duvernay, who he's been designated to return, what, two weeks ago? No, last week, I think. But he got designated to return, so they could put him on the active roster as well. So that would make sense for that. With Mark Andrews, because, um, yeah, that, that would be them running out of roster spots right there. Uh, if, they, if and when they do end up activating Mark Andrews, uh, they're going to have to open up a roster spot 
Where that roster spot is going to come from, no clue. But it had to come from somewhere. So somebody going to have to be released. Somebody going to have to go to IR. Uh, one move that I could think of just off the top of my head um, would be if they re- end up releasing uh, Melvin Gordon. If they release him to open up a spot for Mark Andrews. Uh, anybody else? I, I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head. I'm sure there's somebody there. There's obviously somebody there. But just thinking out loud, I, I can't think of who it will be as of right now. But the good thing, what I really appreciate about this Baltimore Ravens team right now, there's no pressure on, it's like pressure, but no pressure on Mark Andrews to come back. It's pressure on him himself because, hey, he want to be a part of this, obviously. Who wouldn't? Look what, what the Baltimore Ravens are doing. Look how they've been doing. But there's no pressure on them because Isaiah likely has been amazing. He has been great. I was talking to my guy yesterday, and he said he was a little hesitant about the Baltimore Ravens bringing back Mark Andrews, not because of an injury, but because he said he feels like this will this could create tunnel vision uh, for Lamar Jackson uh, if Mark Andrews does end up coming back. And he feels like the, the Baltimore Ravens just compl- they play completely different when Mark Andrews is on the field and he feels like Lamar is going to force the ball to Mark Andrews when he's on the field. And I see what you're saying, but at the same time, I, I, I disagree. I just feel like with Lamar, he's just – He's taking another step forward. Even when Mark Andrews was still healthy, I don't feel like he was force-feeding him like that I, I, because they've been able to get it in so many different ways. They've been able to score and produce in so many different ways. Mark Andrews would, would definitely get his, especially if he's on the field, but we got other options too. So I think Lamar's eyes will continue to rove about the whole field. I don't think they would just be locked on to Mark Andrews and he will only see 89 and, and that would be it. I do see what you're saying, but I just I, I think it would be fine. And again, the more weapons you got, the merrier. Especially if Mark Andrews could be out there if he could run and run after the catch and whatnot and just do his thing, then that that would just make Lamar Jackson's job easier. That will make all the other receivers and pass catchers job easier and just the Ravens offense as a whole, it will make their job a lot easier. And y'all know, we've been saying for years, that's what we all about, people's jobs being made easier. But the Houston Texans, they're going to have something to say about the Baltimore Ravens. Super Bowl hosts being made easier because they're going to come in, and I know they're going to want to be annoying. They're going to want to ruin our hopes and ruin our season. But we know them Baltimore Ravens, they ain't going to let it happen. But, yeah, this should be a fun game. It's going to be a fun week leading up to it. Can't wait. Well, I can't wait. I'm patient right now. But as the week goes on, especially when it's Friday, that's when I'm going to get the shaking and stuff. And when it's Saturday, oh, man. Now we're going to be going crazy, but it's going to be a good time. Y'all know we're going to be back here for the stream on Saturday. I'm looking forward to seeing all y'all there. Uh, and, and shout out to anybody going to the game. I know a lot of y'all going to be going to the game. It should be fun. It should be loud. It should be crazy there. The atmosphere is going to be intense. So if you're going to the game and you don't like loud noise, don't even go to the game because it's going to be crazy, man. But anyway, I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video at all. Also, leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton, a whole ton. For real, it does. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like the Steelers are now when it comes to being in the playoffs, we out.